So I got some things to do today. I got some stuff here on my desk we can play with. Let's start with giving you an update on the land bonds. Can you can we do that? Because that's been fun. We'll, we'll go through the whole land bond thing. If you don't know what I'm talking about, land bonds are one of these open hasp devices. So the land bond is this reasonably priced. It's a touchscreen smart switch. It's got three relays in there. It's got a little 2.4 inch display that's pretty responsive, pretty good. And it works with open hasp. Open hasp. The whole point here, almost ready to list these on the website, on the drz.com so that you can buy them pre-flashed and ready to go. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's beautiful. Wow, that works amazingly well. Oh my goodness. Master streamer here, taking it out of the box. These are the home kit versions, right? You don't want the other kind. The other kind are a little cheaper, but at least in my experience, I couldn't flash it. All right, so this is all we need. We can set this part aside. This is the part we need. And then this is the part where by selling them on my site, this is my, my value add. This is where I'm adding value. I'm using the, an FTDI adapter, a little bit of time on our part to flash it. So that's what we're doing. The way we set this up, and, and I've done this before, and I even have a little video out there about doing it. Child labor, that's right. If you want these to show up in Home Assistant, which you do, then you need to have 0 0.70 of the custom component. So there's two, there's different versions of the custom component because this is still sort of the beta or development version. And you can't have them both at the same time. I learned that the hard way too. So if you have 0 0.63, if you have open HASP devices that are 0 0.63 already installed, then, and you have the Home Assistant integration of 0 0.63, you can't have them both at the same time. So for what, I've, what I'm doing to do is just use 0 0.7 on all of them. So I just deleted the 0 0.63 version of the custom integration for Home Assistant and then installed the 0 0.70 custom integration for Home Assistant and then it will it will recognize them. If you can't get them to be recognized, that's why. I like, what I like about the land bonds is that they have been pretty dependable. So the, the responsive, you don't have to build a case or buy a case and they have the relays. And again, they're not terribly expensive, but I wish, I wish they were cheaper always, right? <laughs> How can you not? So when this is done, we should have these demo pages to look at. This, when you do have your open HASP devices in Home Assistant, or in this case, the LAN bond with this 0 0.70 version, what we're flashing right now, you get this page. This is what the integration gives you. So pretty cool. It's got the three switches. So you can flip, turn the relays on and off. You can't hear them, but I can hear them. You can turn the backlight on and off right here. So you can actually have it set and not only can you turn it on and off, but because it's a light, you can set the brightness. And this is this one, I call it office closet light because this is actually connected to the light switch. These are just switches that have relays in them, but right now they're not connected to anything inside that switch. And then the mood light, this is like one of my favorites. So the mood light, you can change the brightness and you can change the colors, of course. You can also turn on the anti-burn temporarily if you want to. So it kind of makes some static looking stuff on there. You can change the page number that's being displayed. I'm looking at my over my shoulder at mine on, on the wall. You can look at this uh, there and you can restart it all from here. Sweet. Okay, this one's done. Next. So now that it is flashed, if we power it down and then turn it back on, turn it off, turn it back on. Now it'll start up with open hasp. So this will let you connect to your network or you you've can take a picture of the QR code here and it will connect to this thing as a Wi-Fi access point. Or if you just tap it and you can just type your user and password here. I'm going to do that because in order to see the screens, unless you put it on your network, you can't see the screens. But now I put in my password and it is connected to my network and it gave me an IP address. I can say, okay. And then there we have the first page is the page that has the three relays connected. To these buttons so if i were to power it back up now on this thing which i will actually because i've got one over here so let's do that let's go ahead and take this off now can't mess this up jackson still has like 50 of these things to flash child labor that's right pull those off i've got one here that is connected to this so i'm just gonna i like that you can just swap these faces out too that makes it kind of nice now we plug it in starts up open hasp 
195, 195 is there. So now we can flip through the demo pages. So the next page is a WLED control page. This is a thermostat. I know it looks a little bit grainy and funky in the camera. It looks fantastic in, in real life. This is the backlight page, so you can dim it. And it works, and you can turn it off. And if it's off, if the backlight is off, you just tap it and it comes back on. And then this is the mood light page. So mood light has all these different colors. So there's red. And then if you hold it, it does a different shade. Blue, the blue does look very different when you change the color. More of an aqua kind of a color, looks good. And then off, if you want it off. So all those things work out of the box. Long press on off goes white, but it's a mix of RGB. So when you hit the home button, it goes back to the relay page. You can change that in the, in the configuration. And that's not integrated into Home Assistant at all. But if we do go to a Home Assistant, oh no, we have to hook it up. In order to get it to connect to Home Assistant, you do need to do MQTT. So you do have to go into this guy up here and go to your MQTT. So configuration MQTT, and then you have to put in here uh, what, you know, all your stuff. I keep saying one of the things I love, one of the things I love, whatever. One of the things I love about this is that it's so easy to configure. It is really easy. It's it's a text file, but it's not an overly complicated text file. And it you can't really, I guess you can break it, but it's not too hard to tinker with and try and kind of figure it out and find the right thing. So with MQTT, when we want, if we want it to show up up there, then we put a name in here. Let's call it, instead of plate, let's call this one, we're gonna call it Lanbon White. And this is my MQTT broker, which is my home assistant and the user. And then I leave those topics the same and save it. And it probably, I think we still need to do, I don't remember what things all need to restart. So I'm going to restart this guy and then we're going to do home assistant. I'm going to do this restart. So let's say it's not, not everything has started yet, but we'll go back here. We'll go here. We'll just kind of wait. And maybe now I need to restart this one again. <laughs> So basically you just keep on restarting things until something, uh, until something recognizes something else. Oh, there we go. Now we got some notifications. You see that right there? Beep, 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 beep. Notifications. <gasps> uh, new device discovered. Check it out. <gasps> Open hasp. What? Configure. Land bond white, land bond white, brightness, all this. We don't have to do anything. We just go submit. We don't even have to tell it where we want it. Now, when I go to my uh, land bond thing here, and by the way, it looks like it's still because we don't have the YAML, which is great. So now we'll take this opportunity to grab the YAML. We're going to go to the gist, gist GitHub, go to my gist. And then I've got one here for open hasp YAML. You can go in this and you can download this or copy all this. This is a pretty good example page. You will definitely have to go through and change some things. I need to make some notes here about it because switch WLED nightlight and light dot WLED, those are generic. So you will have to adjust the name. Right now it's just WLED. So whatever your WLED device is called, you need to change it here where it says WLED to change it to your device. There's going to be a lot of devices. So what you'd probably want to do is do a control F and find every place that it says WLED and then change all of those all at once to whatever the name of your WLED device is, and that should do it pretty quickly. So we'll do that too. So the WLED device is a generic name. The other generic name that you'll have to change in the YAML is the media player. And then the same goes with the thermostat. For the thermostat, I've got mine set to climate floor heat. So you'd have to change your climate floor heat, change it to whatever you call yours. All right, I think that's pretty good. It'll probably need a little bit of tinkering. It might not be completely foolproof. So we're going to go here to, in this case, we are going to go to Visual Studio. We're going to start with what you got in the configuration.yaml. So in the configuration.yaml, this is what I put. This is open hasp, include directory merge named, and then the name of my folder is open hasp configs. This I just got out of the example stuff from Francis's documentation up here. So it's all in, this is all in here. And you want to do, it's under integrations and home assistant and example configurations. There's information in here about how you set that, how you set that up. So you go in here and you put this, now it's going to look for the YAML files that are in this folder. So over here, there's my folder and in here, I've got the name of the YAML. 
So I'm going to start a new file, so new file, and I'm going to call it Lanbon white dot yaml. And now it gives me a blank here. Now I'm going to take that blank. This is what's really important. The name that here, I don't think home assistant cares. I may be wrong about that, but I don't think it cares what the name of this file is. But what really matters is that you got the right name up here. So and this was my Lanbon black. New one that I just made is Lanbon white. Well, now I'm going to go to the gist and I'm going to copy all this. Okay. Copy that back to Visual Studio and I'm going to paste it. Now we're going to have this do some different things. First, we need to change the name from Lanbon to Lanbon white. I want to go through control F. I want to find Lanbon and I want to see if I need to change it. And here I do open hasp.lanbon. So I am going to need to change this name. I'm going to change it right here to white. Now I'm going to find the next one, the next place it says it. Oh, is that it? Oh, sweet. Okay. So I guess there aren't that many places where it says it. So wait. Let's do some of these other things. WLED with the name of your WLED device. We're going to have it control the main house. Okay, here goes. My main house WLED controller. When, you, when you're when you looking for the name, you need to look under user interface. Yes, server description. So now we're going to go back to Visual Studio Code. We're going to search everywhere that it says WLED and we're going to replace it with the name of my server description, which is going to be WLED underscore main underscore EX. And if I want to make sure that that's the right name, we're going to go into home assistant. We're going to go here and we're just going to make sure that we got the right name again, WLED main EX. That's it. And I want to replace the whole thing. Every time it says WLED, I want it to replace it with WLED underscore main underscore EX and then go. Oh, I got to be careful though. Got to be careful. Don't do that twice. Make sure you stop because look what about happened because I wrote WLED here and then I'm like, oh, everywhere it says WLED, replace it with this. Holy cow. Then I would end up with WLED underscore main EX underscore WLED underscore main EX. You know what I'm saying? It'd make like a loop. So we did it. We changed our WLED. Oh, I changed it here. <laughs> it's very possible that I made a mistake, but so what? Next thing is the media player. This device, this one's going to go in the master bedroom. So we have a media player. We're going to go up there to my home assistant and I'm going to find my media player. So there it is. Media player dot master bathroom. So now we're going to go over here and back to this. We're going to search for, for media player office. So we're going to go control F media player office, hit that little arrow. And then we're going to replace that. I'm going to actually just copy it so that I don't mess it up. Paste it here 21 times, 21 times. Go. That's it. And then it probably changed it up here in the instructions too. That one's it. Yay! We're going to go, we're just going to keep doing it like this. We're going to go up here to the, to home assistant. We're going to find the names of the entities we want. So everywhere that it says climate floor heat, we're going to change that. Oops. Control F. And we're going to change that to climate floor master heat. All right. I would like to skip the first one. So we're going to do this next match. Skip that first one. Look at that. 68 times. Replace all. We're just going to do it. Ready? What are we breaking today, James? We're about to break this. Watch this. Bop. Now we broke it. Hopefully that worked. Looks like it did. And then temperature sensor. So let's save this first. We're going to control S because I've made a lot of changes and not saved it. We're going to go to the lamb on black and we are going to hunt for the Lumi Lumi because this is what I need it to be. So sensor, this is the one that's in the master bedroom. So we're going to copy that. We're going to go back here. And now we're going to say everywhere that we find sensor dot temperature, we're going to replace it with sensor dot temperature Lumi Lumi. Here we go. Place. Okay. That was it. I just changed all those temperature ones. I changed everything. I changed the name of the device. I changed the temperature sensor. I changed the heat. I changed the, the media player and I changed WLED. I think we're done here. So we are going to save this control S. And then I think if we do a restart, just reload this. Yep. So right now though, it just says there's one device. Okay. It says there's one device and I can visit that device and it'll go to the one nine five. But it takes a few minutes for all the entities to show up. We're going to change the color on this screen. And it changes the color up there. All right. So changing. So there's main. Change the color on the land bond. 
Changes the color there. Child labor, that's right.